a homeschooling video for you guys and if you've been watching my channel for a while and you've been watching my homeschooling videos I have mentioned quite a few times the Miss Giraffe uh, math curriculum. If you don't know who Miss Giraffe is, first I'll go back a little bit and tell you that I love Teachers Pay Teachers. I've talked about it so many times and if you don't know what that is, it's basically a website that teachers have created documents and entire programs and curriculum that you can purchase. Um, there's some free stuff on there too, quite a bit of free stuff, but you can purchase these things that you can use whether you're a teacher in a public school system or you're a homeschooling parent or you're just a parent who wants to work a little bit extra with their kids even if they're in public school. There's so many different amazing programs that these teachers are offering for you to purchase and there's sales quite a bit. I just, I love Teachers Pay Teachers, but one of my favorite stores on the Teachers Pay Teachers website is Miss Giraffe. She's an incredible, amazing teacher. She's got so many great um, things that you can purchase. Now the reason I found her was actually on Pinterest. I was trying to find um, some hundreds chart activities for my youngest daughter who just started first grade this, this school year. And we're using Matthew C with her. We used Matthew C last year. We're using Matthew C for first grade. But if you know anything about Matthew C, you know it's very kind of mundane and the activities are a lot the same, just kind of over and over and over. Although, I find there's not enough practice. Even though there's a lot of repetition, I still find there's not enough practice and there's not enough variation in the practice. That's just my personal opinion. I still like Matthew C as a program and we're still going to use it, but I just really needed some supplementary things to um, add to the Matthew C curriculum. We have enjoyed using her program so much and it's really been a great addition to the Matthew C program. And I also really think if you wanted to make a standalone math curriculum, you really could. If you purchased you know, the right um, units that you would need based on your child's level, you really could use all of Miss Giraffe's units as a standalone math curriculum by mixing and matching. There's so many different variations in the activities which I really like. So it's just a really fun way to mix up my daughter's math program. It keeps her from getting bored. It keeps me from getting bored. And it's really enjoyable to have these worksheets that she likes to do combined with her typical math kind of curriculum. It's been a really great marriage of the two and I really have loved using Miss Giraffe's uh, products. And so this video is actually, I'm going to be sharing with you what units that we have, just flipping through to the different units. I will link Miss Giraffe's Teachers Pay Teachers store in the description box below. I will also link each individual unit that I have that I'm getting ready to show you, um, just so you know what I have. And so when you see something, you think, okay, well, that's a really neat place value activity. You can scroll, you can go down to the description box and find uh, Mr. Raff's place value unit or whatever it is you're looking for. Without having to hear me talk anymore, I will show you what we have. I have the four different units divided up by what mostly the unit is about, but I will link the actual numbers because her math units have numbers. I will link the numbers of the units that I have in the description box. But basically we have um, pretty much everything, addition, place value, hundreds chart activities, and money. So for the money unit, I guess we'll start with that one. We've done a lot of the activities, so um, you won't, you know, you'll get a lot more than I'm going to actually be able to show you because number one, we use some of them, and also there's just too many to show you every single page. I mean, there's hundreds of pages usually in each unit, and you can print what you want and save what you're not ready for yet, or print out more if you need more practice, or laminate them. You can use with a dry erase marker, and you can use the same one over and over. And I like how she also incorporates tests so that you can test your kid at the beginning of the year and maybe the middle of the year and the end of the year to see um, what they need to work on and what they have learned over the course of her unit. So this one's all about money. So you've got I Know Coins. She does a lot of cut and paste activities, which I really like. And then back here we have counting coins. And so a lot of the times when she's, my daughter is doing skip counting and just her regular math, that's when I have incorporated um, pennies, nickels, and dimes. We haven't started quarters yet because that's a little bit harder of a concept to grasp as far as counting quarters. Um, but she knows it's worth 25 cents. But as far as like skip counting, that's when I really like to pull these out and work on that with her because she can be doing her skip counting practice while also learning to count up nickels and dimes and pennies. So there's quite a few worksheets for that. And one thing that's nice about all of Miss Giraffe's math units is she has levels. So there's level A, B, and C. A being the easiest and C being the most difficult. So it's really nice to start out easy, challenge your kids, step back if maybe the C's are too hard, do a B or an A level and save the C levels for when, once they've gotten closer to mastery of a, of a topic. So I really like how she offers those. 
Again, another cut and paste, but she's got to add up the different coins and paste them on there. Um, this one, you know, making change, we're not ready for that yet. And that's a level C worksheet anyway. So quite a few of these we still have because she's just not ready for that yet. And then as far as the games go, um, we've got the roll a coin game, which you need the dice for that come with it. Um, so you find a coin on your sheet and you color it in. Um, same thing here, you roll the coins and then add up how much they were worth. This one's really cute, the fill my piggy bank game. Uh, so you laminate it and then you have a dry erase marker. You take turns rolling the coin dice and collecting that coin for your piggy bank. And so you get to, to add it to your little piggy bank. And then we have grab and graph, which you can use real coins or just like the plastic ones. But you grab a handful of coins and then the kid has to graph um, what they got of um, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So there's just quite a few games and even, you know, I didn't print out even everything that I, that was available to us. Um, so I can always go back and do that later. But that is basically um, just some of the activities that you're going to get in the money unit. I'm going to also put in the description box the link to any blog post that Miss Giraffe has done on her blog where she goes into much more detail about the different activities and different ways to do the activities in each of her units. I don't know if she has one on the money unit, but I know she does on some of the other units I'm going to show you. So I'll link all the blog posts that I can find just so you can see more information. So this is the hundred chart unit. And so I combined a little bit of um, the hundreds chart unit with some counting. So I just combined all that into this one. And my daughter, you know, she knows how to count, but um, I just, I thought that made sense to put that together. So again, she offers the test where you can uh, test your child throughout the course of the year to see what their strengths are, what they still need to work on. So there's quite a few of those. Um, and then we have the 10 frame. So that's where it comes into counting. And I don't remember if this actually came with the place value unit or if it came with um, another one of the units. I'm not really sure. So working with different types of 10 frame activities, you've got cut and paste. One thing I like too that she does on some of these is she puts at the bottom, was it easy, just right, or hard? And I have my daughter answer that and that really, um, Helps, helps me to know that you know she still needs um, some more practice if it was too hard. So they're getting all different types of practice, which I really like. So quite a few of those different styles. Again, A, B, and C with the level of difficulty. And then we have 20 frames in the back. So that whole section is just 10 and 20 frames. Then we have counting forward. So starting at any given number and being able to count forward the next few numbers in the cut and paste style. Um, we've got writing it in, so just quite a few variations of that. We've used quite a few of those. You'll get way more than that, but we've used a lot of them. Um, fill in the missing number. I laminated it so she could use a dry erase marker. On this one, they're filled in for you, and then on the back, they're blank. And I like how she starts you out between 1 and 50, and then once your child masters 1 and 50, then you can move on to 50 to 100, and then 100 to 120. So she really makes it nice to, um, to help break it up for kids that might be a little bit overwhelmed about having to count to 120 from the very beginning. Another one of my favorite activities, and this is actually one of the main reasons I actually got this unit. I thought this was so cute, and I'm gonna start laminating them or putting them in page protectors because we've used quite a few of them. They're really good to be able to use over and over if you laminate them or put them in a page protector. But basically, it's a who am I game. So you look at the whale and you say, okay, what number is the whale covering? And so she would write in the four, and so she does that for all of them. And she's got quite a few versions with different animals. There's farm animals and like exotic animals. So I really like that and I think it's really fun. And my daughter really enjoys those. Then here we have the same concept with the fill in the chart, although this one is empty from one to 120 on both sides. We have this one where various numbers are, are gone and she has to go in and write them in. There's quite a few versions of that. And then with the games, and I actually show this on Instagram, and I'll be inserting some pictures here and there as I find them that I've taken. These are 120 chart puzzles. And so you print it out on colored paper, or I laminated ours, and then you just cut them up in any configuration you want. So each puzzle is different, and she has to actually put together the puzzles. But I really have enjoyed having those. I love them, and you know, it's kind of an endless activity. We did four, I think, or five. Yeah, five, but you know, however many ways you're willing to cut the strips, you can make as many puzzles as you need. Um, so I think it's a really neat idea and I really have enjoyed having those. And it's really good for morning work when I want to kind of ease her into her day. Um, I really like to use those. Then we have more games and I just keep the games usually like the instructions uh, clipped here in the back. But just different types of number sense games. She, she gives you some printable flashcards 
Uh, like some printable numbers that you can use for different games like the boxed out game. You take a card and you take turns picking a card and you cover over that number um, on your chart with either you know a, a dot like one of those little discs like for bingo or a dry erase marker or whatever you want to use to cover up um, your number that you drew from your card, your deck of cards and then uh, whoever gets a row first wins. And so it's just really good extra practice for number recognition. Okay, the next unit is the place value unit. I really felt that we needed quite a few supplementary activities because Matthew C was just not enough practice for us to personally to reach mastery and it just wasn't as much fun. But you've got a test you can take at the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, the end of the year, and the stuff like this is one of the reasons why I fell in love with Mr. Raff's products because Everything is so fun and colorful and I'm having a really hard time getting these out one-handed. But as you can see, like the game is that you have the little ice cream cone and yes, my printer was running out of ink, which is why I have stripes. Um, this is not the right top for this cone, but I just, I don't want to look through that bag right now. But whatever the number is here, they'll find the matching top of the ice cream cone and match it up. And I just think stuff like that my daughter really loves. It's really fun and engaging. Let me have um, breaking down tens and ones. And there's this one where you have to write in, they tell you the 10 and the two and you have to make that 12. And then right here you just have a value of digits cut and paste. So you cut out and put whatever number in each category. So if the number underlined is in the ones place, it goes in this category. And if it's in the tens place, it goes in that side. There's a couple of those. Same thing with value of digits. Um, place value with the blocks and we can use our Matthew C blocks if we want to. Color in the number and then answer the question. So how many tens and how many ones? So bringing back you know, ice cream cones. And you can really make up whatever numbers that you want for these empty ones. And then the games I have in the back. So the ice cream uh, place value game. So you write the number in different ways with expanded form, written form, base 10 and tens and ones. Grab a handful game. So you grab a handful of whatever manipulative you want and estimate how many you think are in it and then actually count them and write them. So you have estimating and counting, and I laminated that. And then here's where we have the place value dice roll game, which is where you would need these. And then I have a recording sheet for that with uh, laminated. And then roll a number with dice. And then I just have that laminated as well. So she can use that on a dry erase marker. So there's just so many different activities. Here's another one. Um, rolling a number and then counting what the next three line, the next three numbers are. The last one that we have is, it says addition, but this unit actually had addition and subtraction. I just didn't print out the subtraction yet because we're not ready for it yet. So again, with the test at the beginning, middle, and the end of the year. In the first pocket, I just have lots of addition worksheets. This one I put in page protectors um, instead of laminating them just because I didn't feel like laminating them. Um, but it's a addition, it's an addition word search, like search, which I had never seen before. So you have to go through, and just like you would in a word search, you know, an angle or straight, you have to find whatever numbers together will equal seven. So four and three and six and one and two and five. And so I thought that was really neat. So there's one for sevens and eights, nines and tens. The fact fluency is really cute. And if you look at the blog post that she has on um, about this unit, she even talked about how she made hers reusable. So she laminated this and put like Velcro dots and then um, put Velcro on these and that way the kids could use it more than once. So you could use it as a center activity um, or just if you need a lot of repetition instead of you know cutting this one and it being done once it's done, you could do that if you wanna make it more of a long-term activity. Another one that I really liked was the Amazing Fluency. My daughter loves mazes. Um, and so the first one we did, I actually had her color on it with crayon and so I thought I'm gonna put these in page protectors also so she can use dry erase and we can use them over and over again. They get a lot of practice between here and there of finding whatever number. So this one's five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10. And then number bonds, I put at the end since it's a little bit of a harder concept to grasp, I think. Um, but then what's the missing number? So two plus what equals eight? And they have to go down here and find the right one. And there's quite a few of those as well. Um, another thing with the game, and I, I really love her games, and this one is an addition puzzle game, which again, I had never seen anything like it before. You get these big strips that say like six, and then we have the little pieces um, that you have to find the problems that equal six. So like an example right here is two plus four equals six, and so it would fit on the puzzle right there. And then the, the thing I put at the end is adding 10, just because I think that's gonna be um, 
something we'll touch on after we have pretty much mastered her addition facts between one and nine. And then again, we have it here at the back and I put it on Instagram, put a picture of it right here. I just picked up some little dominoes from the Dollar Tree and that way we can play a game with this where you have Take turns picking a domino and adding up the sum on the domino and then covering up your spot. And then this one's just rolling facts. So there's quite a few of those. So you roll one die and you add, okay, zero plus whatever was on the die to get the number. And that's just a fun game for extra practice too. So that is everything that I printed this time from this unit. And this is, I believe, the unit 10. But like I said, I'm gonna link everything in the description box. So as you can see, everything that she does, that she creates, is really fun and engaging. I like that she's got a mixture of just worksheets you can do and, you know, throw them away or file them away or whatever. That She's got the ones that are great to use in page protectors to use over and over again. I love all the hands-on uh, activities like the hundreds chart puzzles. I love all the games that she includes. I love that she includes um, like an assessment so you can try you know, beginning, middle of the end, beginning, middle, and end of the year to see what progress your student has made in a certain topic. Um, and then I love the dice. I think it's my favorite thing. Other than the hundreds charts puzzles, I think the dice are my favorite. They're so big and chunky and cute and adorable, and I really love having them and using them. I think her store on Teachers Pay Teachers is awesome. She's got such a variety of things, and I just I love her work. I encourage you to check out her store and her blog. I will link it down below as well. I hope you guys found this video helpful and it gave you a little bit more insight into what we're doing with my first grader this year. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.